food has no chance around me. When you have no words, that's a big How deal. How can you possibly get this? I mean, there is just so much to talk about. All right. Get it while you can. <laughs> Y'all make this one. Cole, we get one. Oh, oh. It is no surprise I am back with three new recipes for y'all. Two dinner recipes and a dessert. We're excited about all of the things we're about to eat. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Before we get started, I did wanna thank Caraway for sponsoring today's video. It is no surprise that I love their products. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them in just a little bit, but let's get started on our first meal. Tonight, I am cooking in the crock pot. This is something I've never tried before and so many of y'all and my friends have told me I need to do this. We're doing Mississippi chicken. However, we're gonna turn them into sliders. There's just a piece of fuzz just floating. Got it. So I'm sure most of you have tried Mississippi pot roast. If you haven't, I highly recommend. I've been told a gazillion times to do it with chicken. I don't love chicken breast in the crock pot. The more I learn about it and just the more I've cooked chicken in the crock pot. You really have to be careful with it or it dries out, but chicken thighs won't dry out. So this is so, so simple. I'm using my smaller crock pot. I am halving the recipe that I saw online. So I'm only doing four chicken thighs. If you were doing the whole recipe, you'll need six to eight chicken thighs, but you'll also need two things of the King's Hawaiian rolls for later. With our small family, this is all we needed. Next, we're just gonna use about a tablespoon and a half of dry ranch powder. If you're doing this amount and you are using a pack, you'll use about half, uh, well, three fourths of the pack maybe, not quite the whole pack. Now I've got pepperoncinis. We're not gonna use the whole thing, I don't know, four or five of them and just place them kind of around. And we are gonna pour a little bit of the juice in here too. Now we need about four tablespoons of butter I've just sliced it up really small. We're just gonna place this all over the top and optional, but y'all know we love a little bit of heat. I've got some crushed red pepper, just like a half, a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon, not a lot, just to add a little extra heat. I'm gonna be cooking this on high because it's already the afternoon, but you can cook this low and slow all day, but I'm just gonna do it on high. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Caraway, who is the sponsor of this video. Over the last nine months or so, in every single video, I get the question, where's that pan from? Where's that pot from? Everyone is asking about them, so I'm happy to give you an update and give you a little more detail. Some things I love about Caraway is that they are non-toxic, they are non-stick, and when I say non-stick, I mean they are non-stick. They are the easiest pots and pans I've ever had to be able to clean. They are beautiful and they come with a really cool way to store them. So the storage comes with the set when you purchase it. So I've been using this in my kitchen pretty much exclusively for the past nine months. And I cook almost every day. I mean, there are some days when we go out, but for the most part, I'm cooking and sometimes multiple times a day and I'm using this cookware and it has held up beautifully. This ceramic kitchenware is free of toxins. So you can cook for your family guilt-free. You don't have to worry about anything. And I mentioned it's ceramic. It's naturally slick. Everything <laughs> pretty much just slides right off of it. They have so many options as far as colors to choose from. So definitely check out their website and just kind of look through all of their different options. I can't remember how many there are. I chose this one just because I'm a classic girl, but they've got so many cool options. They have a lid organizer for the three lids that come with this set, and then they have these little magnetic cases that all magnetize together, which is great. So if you are looking to invest in some great cookware, I cannot recommend this enough. Just check out Caraway's site. I've got it linked below. And with the code MANDY10, you're gonna save 10% site-wide. I love Caraway. I love that it's lasted this long and I have a feeling it's gonna last for years to come. Okay, while our Mississippi, uh, I almost said pot roast chicken, is cooking, we're gonna make dessert. We're not gonna be able to have the dessert tonight because it needs to set up. Um, so we'll have it tomorrow, but I'm excited about this one. It's a jello salad. It is a berry fruity jello salad and it comes from Maud. It sounded really good, but there was one ingredient that made me pause and I did some research. I'm sure it's great, but it just was like, really? But apparently it's pretty common and that is sour cream, but it's only for the topping and we'll do that tomorrow when we are putting it together. But I've got the recipe here. I'm a little concerned because she said one large raspberry jello box, but it says dissolve with one cup of hot water and one cup of cold water. 
that was the regular size. I didn't see a large of the raspberry anyway, but when I looked at the directions on here, it says one cup of cold, one cup of hot water. So we're gonna just go with the regular size. I hope that's right. But Maud said that this recipe comes from her lovely neighbor, Sarah, many years ago. And she said she might or might not make this and eat it all by herself. Maud, you are my kind of woman. <laughs> I went to the eye doctor the other day and he said I am this close to needing bifocals. Isn't that fun? But I had to put my glasses on so I could read this and make sure. Yeah. Okay. So let's get some boiling water. Let's get this going. It's very, very easy to assemble and I cannot wait to taste it. Okay. She didn't say what size to use, what size container to use. I'm just going to use this. I think it's a two quart pretty sure but let's add our jello gelatin in here and we're gonna add our boiling water and let's stir that around until it's all dissolved okay that's dissolved let's add in a cup of cold water and then we're just gonna add in the rest of the ingredients she just said just dump it all in together okay we've got a can of jellied cranberry sauce I've already taken the lid off it's upside down I don't understand that but jellied cranberry sauce sure did just do that just plopped it in there and splashed it everywhere about half of my jello is on the countertop right now let's see if I can not make a huge mess you know what I probably need a whisk so let's do that do you like jelly cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving or do you like whole cranberry sauce I am the jellied girl I think that's pretty good we have a can of crushed pineapple that I have drained let me not create and splatter this everywhere. Cole is in here watching me. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's about to be. You missed it a second ago. I splatter. Oh, there's still a lot of juice in there. What is that? <laughs> it's a little scary. It's a jello salad, sweetie. It's a jello salad. Mm -hmm. Right now you can make a salad out of jello. How healthy is that? Super healthy. So there we go. There's that. We've got these red raspberries. It says red raspberries. Are there different? Like it literally says red raspberries. Are there different color raspberries? Am I unaware? What purple? Are there? What green? You're just making stuff up. Be quiet. Now I'm also going to be adding in strawberries to this. She said you could add in some fresh raspberries or some strawberries. So I'm going to go with strawberries. That's plenty because I'm really getting scared at this point. And she said about a cup and a half. Of sliced strawberries this looks divine the only part that scares me a little bit but I'm trusting the process is that whole sour cream thing I'm going to cover it with some saran wrap put it in the fridge we will just wait and try this tomorrow but y'all it's gonna be so good okay our chicken is done so let's preheat our oven to 350 so last week on our video I talked about I don't really love sun-dried tomatoes. It's not the flavor of them. I love the flavor. It's the chewiness. It's the texture of them. So we have several comments. Beth Lewis said, try soaking the sun-dried tomatoes in hot water for about 10 minutes to mitigate that texture thing. Mm, I love that. You still get the taste. Works with raisins too, if they bother you too. I love raisins. They, they don't bother me, oddly enough. I guess maybe because they're so small. Um, but the chewiness of those sun-dried tomatoes. So I love that. Now, so you've got that, so you can soak them in hot water for 10 minutes. Or we had two comments. <clears throat> Read these next two. Yeah, this one's from Rita Smoot. Said, hey Mandy, for the sun-dried tomatoes, try them pureed. Throw, like throw some in the blender so you can still add the flavor. And then one other person said the same thing. Ish. Yeah. Amy Rogers said, put the sun-dried tomatoes in the blender might help the texture. So you yeah. can soak them or put them in the blender and you still get the great flavor of the sun-dried tomatoes. You just don't have the chewy texture. And I can tell y'all this because I'm not the only one out there who doesn't like the texture. My comments are full of comments from y'all saying that you don't like the, t the texture of sun-dried tomatoes either. So I feel justified. You know, I don't hear a lot of people say that they don't like cream cheese, I'm just saying. But they agreed with me on the sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> there's a way for you to get around that. So um, it smells really good in here. It does smell good. The chicken is done. We've got the oven preheating. We've got all the ingredients that we need for the uh, sliders portion. Oh, except the Gouda cheese. There's, Gouda. There's sliced Gouda. Will you get it out for us? I'm gonna use my little mix and chop tool to shred this chicken right here in the crock pot. All right, let's, um, let's remove the pepperoncinis, babe. 
go right ahead. I love this little tool. It is great. Mm -hmm. the flavor in that water or juice. It's butter. Butter. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> there's a lot. There's some juice in there too, but there's a lot of butter. So I'm just slicing all of these in half. This knife is perfect length for this. It gets it all the way through. Ta da! So I've got about a tablespoon and a half of butter here that I just melted. We need about a half a tablespoon of the dry ranch powder and about a half a tablespoon of dried parsley. Let's just mix that together. This is gonna go on top in just a minute of the rolls. But let's start assembling. We're gonna let this hang out for just a minute. So I don't know if y'all knew this, but Caraway also has bakeware. This is the slate blue color. It's beautiful. And we've got mayonnaise and spicy brown mustard. Let's layer this on there. I mean, it's gotta be Dukes though. <laughs> gotta be Dukes. I can't tell you, have I ever purchased anything other than Dukes mm. in our 23 years of marriage? I don't think I have. I don't think so. Okay, now let's do our mustard. Cause I, my mom, I always had Miracle Whip. My daddy was always a Dukes guy, but my mom always loved Miracle Whip. So I grew up on both. Maybe when we first got married, I got some Miracle Whip, I don't know. Now you're gonna take your chicken and start layering it here on your sliders on that bottom. I'm trying to drain it a little bit as I'm picking it up out of the juices. So I've got sliced Gouda cheese. If you don't like Gouda or if you can't find it at your grocery store, use provolone instead, that's fine. Now here comes our butter mixture. So you're gonna cover this tightly with aluminum foil and this is going in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes and then the last five minutes we will remove the foil off the top. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Let's remove the foil and it's just gonna go back in for just another five minutes or so. That's amazing. Man, that is so good. Is it a new favorite slider? Oh man, this is like. <laughs> when you have no words, that's a big How deal. How can you possibly get this? I mean, there is just so much to talk about. The flavor of the chicken is unbelievable. I know. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, the slider has got that like buttery, you know, kind of flavor to it and then with that chicken flavor, the spiciness of it. That cheese is delicious yeah, with this. Yeah, mm. well, I'm so glad. Cole has already devoured one whole slider. Cole, mm -hmm. on, we get one, th oh, oh, yes. I done good. And I've heard of people doing sliders with their leftover Mississippi pot roast before, but mm. this is excellent. This will probably be in a favorites. I don't have any Gouda for Luda. And my nickname is Gracie Lou, or my name is Gracie Lou, but my nickname is Luda. Okay, so for our next comment, this has to do with when I made the tzatziki chicken salad and we put it on the pita bread. When I bought that pita bread, I looked at it and it said pita loaves. It did not say pita pockets. And I hmm. thought, well, that's weird. I always thought they were supposed to be pockets, but okay, maybe not. If you cut those pitas in half, <laughs> you can stuff them. I, I love them warmed, not as bready. I just put them in the toaster. So several mm, of you told us to really warm good. them first. They won't tear that way. And even though it didn't say pita pocket, I had one left over. I cut it in half and yeah, I could just squeeze There's it a, and uh, you, could, you could open it up. <laughs> so we just did it wrong. <laughs> it's all good. You know. We so, just fold. <laughs> we just folded them in half. Uh, just, it worked fine, but y'all yeah. are right. We are back inside. We are about to start cleaning up the kitchen but I promised somebody some cheese. I don't think she's ever had Gouda, but let's see if she likes it. That's a yes. That's a, where's the rest of it? All right, it is next day. Be careful. It is next day. It did not set up as well as I had hoped. I may not have drained the pineapple enough. I mean, it's, it jiggle jiggles. It does. <laughs> All it's right. okay. Thank but you. I appreciate that. No, oh. <laughs> come back over here. We need to make the topping for it now. Um, now this is where I kind of was a little. What is it? Is it sus? I was a little sus. A little suspicious. Yeah, with this one because it uses sour cream. Do what? Okay, see. With mini marshmallows, but when I'm I was. A, I'm not a huge marshmallow fan, but. 
Well, you're gonna put the, each person puts the topping on their own. I'm not gonna put it over the whole thing, so. We need a cup and a half of sour cream, which is almost this entire thing. I love marshmallows. I, I would eat this whole bag just by itself. I'm guessing the sweetness of the marshmallows evens out the sourness of the sour cream. Oh, this is so interesting. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite, because I need to know. Cheers. Oh, okay, I can get down with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. That looks good. It does look good. Do you want any of the topping or no? I reckon. You wanna try a little bit of it? We better try some of it. I'll put it kind of to the side. Just put it on top. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so let's try this together. We're going to the lake today. Somebody from our church is having several people over and they asked us to bring a dessert. I was gonna make the strawberry shortcake dessert that everybody has been raving about, mm. but I think we'll take what's left of this yeah. too. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta cheers it. I cheers it. Tink. Wow. Maud, mm. I see why you eat this yourself. Wow, okay. Yeah, I can Whoa. definitely, no, I know why the sour cream is in there mm -hmm. now. Because the strawberry mixture is like really tart. And raspberry. Mm -hmm. and the raspberry is like really tart and sweet. And then you've got the the sour cream kind of. It tones it down. Tones it down. I don't really got, mm. Y'all need to make this. Don't let the sour cream mixture scare you like it oh, did yeah. me. Don't. It's perfect with it. I mean, absolute perfection. Dude, I, stop. I mean, look, I'm not playing around. <laughs> Food has no chance around me. You All right. Get it while you can. <laughs> Y'all make this one. Steven just took some tomatoes next door because we have way too many tomatoes. So he took them to our neighbors next door and they came back and gave us a huge zucchini <laughs> and some squash. We're so, swap, we swapping veggies. We are, we swapping veggies here in the South. Do y'all do this? If you have a neighbor that has a garden too, highly recommend. Maybe next year we'll have to um, coordinate with them, see what they're growing. We'll grow something different and that way we can just trade. But that was so nice of him to come back and bring all of that. So we're gonna be incorporating that into some meals this week too. Okay, for our third recipe for this video, I am making a quick lunch for Stephen and I before we head to the lake. Some people from our church invited us to their lake, or to their lake, they don't own the lake, they own a house at the lake <laughs> today. So we're gonna go hang out there all afternoon. Before we go, we need to eat lunch. So I thought I would make a very healthy, quick, light lunch and share it with y'all. So this recipe is supposed to be salmon pesto pasta. I thought we had salmon. We didn't. We had a about a pound of halibut and this recipe calls for a pound of salmon. They're two different types of fish. Halibut is a white flaky fish, salmon, you know, but we're gonna go with it. It's fish. We love fish. It'll be fine. So we are making halibut pesto pasta. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and heat this pan to about medium, a little over medium. And we will add a little bit of butter and olive oil in just a second. I need to fill this one up with water. We're just gonna cook our noodles according to package directions. The recipe didn't state which noodles to use. I'm just gonna be using this rotini. And honestly, this is a mixture of two boxes. I had some tri-colored ro rotini and then just regular. So that's what's all in this box. We need eight ounces of rotini, which would be half of the box. And we just need to boil that, like I said, according to package directions. One other thing I don't know that I've mentioned, you don't want to cook these pans, their cookware. You don't wanna put it on high heat. So I'm just going to turn this to about medium high. It will still boil. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. I always just put the lid on it and let it hang out over here. But you just don't want to use this on high heat. I've already patted them dry a little bit, but here we go. We're just gonna use a little bit of the anti-no-no's. I get asked all the time if we still use anti-no-no's. We do. This has got salt, pepper, and garlic powder in it, as well as a few other things, but I think that's perfect. Now we need to dredge this in a little bit of flour. We are gonna be breaking this apart later, but we're gonna cook it whole, just so it's easier to manage while you're cooking, instead of worrying about a ton of little pieces, but this will be broken apart for, the, for serving. Lovely. We're gonna add just one tablespoon of butter, as well as one tablespoon of olive oil. That's all we need. We're just gonna let that butter melt down. It's all melted. Let's add our fish in. And we're just gonna cook it maybe three minutes on each side. Fish does not take long to cook. If you've never cooked with fish, you can overcook it, just cook it too much. When you're used to cooking things like chicken, things that take longer, it's difficult to get used to how quickly fish cooks. <laughs> it's so nonstick that everything just kind of slips around in there. But 
Now we're flipping it so we can cook on the other side. There we go. Look at that golden color we've got. Love it. Beautiful. For fish, you want to get it around 130, 135. I mean, it's not an exact science with fish. It's when it gets really flaky, but so we're giving these just a couple of more minutes. We have been turning them a good bit so they don't get too brown on one side, but they're almost done. And our pasta is over here boiling. It only has a few more minutes. Okay, for our last comment, I don't even remember saying this, and my mama texted me when she was watching last Friday's video and quoted this back to me, and apparently I said it, and I didn't even realize I said it. Measure cheese with your heart. Hands down the best comment I've ever heard on a cooking video. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, you just got to measure cheese yeah. with your heart and measure garlic with your heart, too. <laughs> At least in this family. What in your family, what is y'all's favorite ingredient that you just kind of, you ignore what it says in the recipe and you just go with what, it feel, what you feel in your heart. So, yeah. love, sweet love. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was, dude, have I been doing this whole thing? You just and had a little tiny little speck right there. Did listen, you see it? Listen, if you were watching this is on TV. payback for all the times. For, for all, all the times? Time. What? You got a little something right there. Let me get it. But I would have noticed it before we started I just, filming. I just, I just noticed it. And you were talking. I didn't want to just do that. So if you're watching on TV and I'm very just, large, you, just felt bad about you probably it. already saw that. And he's over here picking at me like I'm a monkey now. I'm just reciprocating. <laughs> Reciprocation. Oh my gosh, y'all. Now I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> do I have anything in my teeth? No. Okay. Oh my. That's what she would do. She, she'd go, she'd go drive through. That's right. <laughs> drive through. <laughs> Make sure you can drive through. There ain't nothing in the way. So he's just removing these to this plate over here. So we've got it on medium heat. I'm going to be adding in about a third a cup of chicken broth. As well as a third a cup of pesto. Let's whisk that around. Oh, the smells. And what you're gonna do here is if you have any brown bits on the bottom, anything that you need to scrape up, this is when you would be scraping. This is extremely non-stick, so I really don't have anything that I need to scrape up. I'm turning it down to more medium low. We're gonna add in a fourth a cup of heavy cream. And this is optional, but we are gonna add in just a tiny little bit of fresh lemon juice. It's like a half a teaspoon. We're gonna let this come up to a little simmer. And while we do that, let's go drain our pasta. Okay, this has been bubbling for about a minute. We're gonna add our halibut back in, or you can add your salmon back in. And we are gonna break it up into smaller pieces at this point. And it should break up fairly easy. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. We're gonna let this hang out for just a couple of minutes before we toss our pasta in with it. Eight ounces of pasta going in. And you know what's gonna make it even better? Some freshly grated Parmesan cheese all over the top. What do you think? That sounds delicious. Thank you for your help over here. Absolutely. Gosh, it smells so good, y'all. I've been gnawing on this. Shh, Steven. <laughs> Tell people I took a bite out of that. <laughs> I've been gnawing on that. <laughs> I neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> I feel like we're at Olive Garden where they say, tell me when. Yeah, you never want to say when. No, you just let them do the whole block. Okay, but I'm going to say when. Don't say it. Don't say when? it. When? When? How can this not taste good? I mean, I, seriously. I don't think we put any cheese in that. We need to put some more in uh -huh, there. You're so funny. All right, let's eat. It's just me and Steven here Looking today. Good. Big old chunks of fish. Oh, wow. That fish is really good. It's very flaky. Yes. Meaty. And of course, the pesto has like got that nutty, citrusy mm -hmm. flavor to it. And it's coated really well in that pesto. Okay, good. I was worried that it didn't yeah. quite look like a whole lot, but a little bit goes a long way it with does. that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a great balance of flavors. Okay, good. I think the halibut actually pairs really nicely with this. Okay, good. I mean, I think you could actually probably do chicken with this if you really wanted to. Oh, I'm to. sure you could. Yeah, absolutely. I am dying to try this. Mm -hmm. We have a little girl who was on the back porch, but has come in, of course, just in time to eat. Do you want some fish? I don't mm. know. Mm. Oh, yep. That went quickly. Mm. Okay, well, if you've never had halibut, it's a very meaty fish. It does not taste like fish. It reminds me of chicken. Mm. I'm not even kidding. It, it's very mm. much a chicken-like fish. <laughs> mm. 
This is delicious. I love this. And Gracie Lou loves it too. You want some more? Oh, oh. I dropped it on you, but it rolled off. Yeah, it's so good, huh? We have so much fun in the kitchen. I hope you do too. I hope you have fun while you're cooking meals for your family. And if you don't already have Caraway cookware in your house and you're interested, go check out their website. I've got it linked below and then use the code MANDY10 and you're gonna get an additional 10% off site-wide for anything that you purchase. Thanks y'all, I'll see you next time. Bye.